that passes out of the tower. There are several basic steps involved in shutting down and starting up a cooling tower cell. Since cooling towers are important to many processes, you need to know how to properly place a cell in service and take it out of service. The steps we'll cover are often followed in startup and shutdown procedures. But be sure to follow your facility's operating procedures when you're starting up or shutting down a cooling tower cell. You should also be aware of the impact that shutting down or starting up a cell will have on the processes. First, the operator checks a temperature recorder to see if the cooling tower will be able to cool the cooling water sufficiently with one less cell in service. Once he's sure that the remaining cells will cool the water, he shuts off the fan and opens its breaker. He then tags out the breaker to warn other workers not to reset it. Then the operator closes the valve on the inlet line to the cell's trough. Once the valve is shut, the cell is out of service. Once the cell is shut down, the operator monitors the operation of the cooling tower to ensure that the cells in service are properly cooling the water. When the operator is informed that additional cooling is needed, he begins the startup of the cell. First, he opens the valve on the inlet line to the cell's trough. This fills the trough with water, and the water starts to cascade through the cell. Then the operator removes the tag from the breaker, closes the breaker, and restarts the fan. Once the fan is up to speed, the cell is back in service. When a cooling tower is in service, it's important to check it for proper operation. As an operator, there are several routine checks that you can make to ensure that the tower is operating properly. One thing to check is the water level in the catch basin. If the level is too low, the circulating pump could lose suction. That could damage the pump and reduce or stop the flow of circulating water. The level in the catch basin is sensed by floats in the basin. Operators should check the floats to make sure they move freely so that the proper level can be maintained in the basin. While checking the water level in the catch basin, operators should also check the appearance of the water. If the cooling water is murky or if it has a film on it, there may be a problem with the cooling water system, such as a leak in one of the heat exchangers. The pump and its driver should be checked for unusual noises, excessive vibration, and overheating. The lubrication of the driver and pump should be checked as well. Often, screens or filters are placed in front of a pump suction. Screens are used to prevent trash or other foreign material from entering the pump. A plugged screen could restrict water flow into the pump and cause the pump discharge pressure to drop below normal. To prevent this problem, the screen should be checked and cleaned or replaced periodically. Another thing on a cooling tower that should be checked is the spray from the nozzles. In order for the tower to cool efficiently, the water has to be distributed evenly over the packing. If the pattern of water falling over the packing is irregular or contains gaps, it's an indication that nozzles may be blocked or clogged. While checking the water falling through the tower, it's also a good idea to check the packing for damage. The fan, along with its gearbox and driver, should also be checked for unusual noises, excessive vibration, and overheating. Also, the lubrication of the fan and driver should be checked. In addition to the checks we've just covered, it's also important for operators to regularly monitor cooling water temperatures and pressures to make sure they're within normal ranges. For example, the discharge pressure of the circulating pump should be checked to ensure proper flow through the system. Also, water temperatures should be checked to see if the correct amount of cooling is taking place. In this topic, we looked at the basic steps involved in shutting down and starting up a typical cooling tower cell. We also watched an operator make some basic checks on an operating cooling tower. Now let's try some practice questions on this